जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय अद्वैत चंद्र जय गौरव भक्त वृंद रामानंदरियलान राय continued by saying that during the ras dance radha rani suddenly left the arena as if she were angry that no special favor was being shown her krishna was desirous of seeing radha rani in order to fulfill the purpose of the ras dance but not seeing radha rani there he became very sorrowful and went to search her out in the gita govinda there is a nice verse which states that krishna the enemy of kamsa wanted to be entangled in loving affairs with women and thus simply took radha rani into his heart and left the company of the other damsels of raja the next verse describes how krishna was very much afflicted by radha rani's absence and being thus distress in mind began to search her out along the banks of the yamuna failing to find her he entered the bushes of vrindavan and began to lament ramanan rai pointed out that one who discusses the purport of these two special verses of the gita govinda 3.1 to 2 can relish the highest nectar of radha and krishna's loving affairs Although there were many gopis to dance with, Krishna especially wanted to dance with Radha Rani. In the Ras dance, Krishna expanded himself and placed himself between every two gopis. But he was especially present with Radha Rani. However, Radha Rani was not pleased with Krishna's behavior, as described in the Pujwala. nila mani the path of loving affairs is just like the movement of a snake among young lovers there are two kinds of mentality causeless and causal thus when radha rani left the arena of the ras dance out of anger and not receiving special treatment anger at not receiving special treatment krishna became very sad because he could not see her among the other gopis the perfection of the ras dance was considered complete due to radha rani's presence and in her absence krishna considered the dance to be disrupted therefore he left the arena to search her out when he could not find radha rani after wandering in several places he became very distressed thus it is understood that krishna could not enjoy his pleasure potency even in the midst of all the other gopis but in the presence of radha rani he was satisfied please continue to read this is loving past times between radha and krishna so we will just read them so i continue right yeah okay yeah. when the trans when this transcendental love between radha rani and krishna was described by raman and rai lord chaitanya said i came to you to understand the transcendental loving affairs between krishna and radha and now i am very satisfied that you have described them so nicely i can understand from your version that the highest loving state is that between krishna and radha yet lord chaitanya still requested ramanan rai to explain something more what are the transcendental features of krishna 
and Radha Rani and what are the transcendental features of their reciprocation of their feelings and what is the love between them. If you kindly describe all this to me, I will be very much obliged except for you. No one can describe such things. I do not know anything, Ramanand Rai replied in all humility. I am simply saying what you are causing me to say. I know that you are Krishna himself, yet still you are relishing hearing about Krishna from me. Therefore, please excuse me for my faulty expression. I am just trying to express whatever you are causing me to express. Ramananda Rai knows that Lord Chaitanya is Krishna and he knows that Krishna, you are making me speak. Ramananda Rai is not being, you know, one may become very prideful. No? One may say, oh, look, I am giving knowledge to, to Lord Chaitanya about the loving affairs of Radha and Krishna. But here we can see Ramananda Rai's humility. He's saying, you are causing me to speak. I don't know anything. I'm speaking whatever you want me to speak. Mm. I'm it's speaking to you. Humility. Sort of like, right? I'm sorry? I'm, I'm speaking through you, sort of like telling uh, Chaitanya, no? uh, Prabhu. <laughs> yeah. You, you are, I'm speaking yeah. whatever you are telling me. Yeah, yeah. So you are speaking actually. Yes. Right. Hare so, Krishna. And then yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, so Shilpa, uh, I, I'm, I'm forgetting or, or I don't know if this was mentioned. Uh, what, what made Lord Krishna come as Chaitanya? I know he came to understand the love of Radha, but and to explain us. But uh, what happened and why did he come as Chaitanya at that time? Why not earlier? What transpired? I mean, yeah. Because also he had to give us this yoga dharma of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. You know, he had to give us this. And he, whenever Krishna comes in the Dwapar Yuk, following that Dwapar Yuk, the Kali that comes, Lord Chaitanya comes. Krishna himself comes as Lord Chaitanya. And then as you rightfully said, he wanted to understand the love of Srimati Radharani. He wanted to experience the glory of her love and he wanted to understand what qualities in him she relishes. Because when he had come 5,000 years ago, he was seeing that, oh, the gopis are enjoying more than me. What's this? You know, they are they are pleasing me, but so they are pleasing me. So he's like, okay, so I should feel happy, you know. But they are feeling happier than me by pleasing me. So what is this happiness they are feeling? So to taste that. And then he also, of course, to give us this yoga dharma, he knows we have no qualification in this age of Kali. People at that time had become very um, degraded. Nobody was following any religious principles. Advaita Acharya, at that time, seeing the seeing the pitiful condition of the society, he pleaded to Lord Krishna by loudly calling out to him by offering Ganges and Tulsi leaves to the Shalagram Shila. He was praying to the Lord, loudly calling out to the Lord to come for our benefit. That's why Lord Chaitanya came. Krishna came as Lord Chaitanya. Is that okay? okay? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. He came as a Chana, right? Avatar. Chana Avatar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. He came to show us how to be a devotee. He's devotee. Krishna himself. He showed us how to love Krishna, how we can be situated in our eternal loving relationship with Krishna. Like a teacher teaches ABC to the student. Like that, he came to teach us. Channa avatar. Yes. Channa means uh, hidden, right? Hidden. hidden like, yeah. Yes. Okay. Hidden. I am a Mayavadi sannyasi. 
Lord Chaitanya protested, I have no knowledge of the transcendental features of devotional service. By the greatness of Sarvabhom Bhattacharya, my mind has become clear and I am now trying to understand the nature of devotional service to Lord Krishna. The Bhattacharya recommended that I see you in order to understand Krishna. Indeed, he said that you are the only person who knows something about love of Krishna. Therefore, therefore I have come to you upon the recommendation of Sarvabhom Bhattacharya. Please then do not hesitate to relate to me all the confidential affairs between Radha and Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya is completely disregarding what Ramananda Rai is saying, that you are Krishna himself. You're making me speak. He's saying, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm coming to you because Sarvabhama Bhattacharya came, told me. I'm just Mayavadi Sanyas. He told me to come, so I've come. Now you continue to speak. <laughs> In this way, Lord Chaitanya actually took the subordinate position before Raman and Rai. This has very great significance. One who is serious about understanding the transcendental nature of Krishna should approach a person who is actually enriched with Krishna consciousness. One should not be proud of his material birth material opulence, material education, and material beauty. And with these things, try to conquer the mind of an advanced student of Krishna consciousness. One who thus goes to a Krishna conscious person, thinking that he would be favorably induced, is under misconception about this science. One should approach a Krishna conscious person with all humility but relevant questions to him and not challenge him. If one were to challenge him, such a highly elevated Krishna conscious person would not be available to receive any tangible service. A challenging puffed up person cannot gain anything from a Krishna conscious man. He simply remains in material consciousness. Although Lord Chaitanya was born in a high Brahmana family and was situated in the highest perfectional stage of sannyasa. He nonetheless showed by his behavior that even an elevated person would not hesitate to take lessons from Ramanan Rai. Although Ramanan appeared as a house, householder situated in a social status beneath that of a Brahmana. So Lord Chaitanya is setting the standard and that is whoever is a pure devotee, whoever knows the science of Krishna is Guru. He's telling it doesn't matter what family, what profession, doesn't matter. If one is uh, speaking about Krishna, one knows the science of Krishna, then he is the, he is the Guru and we should approach such a person. With humility, Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita, Tat Viti Pranipati Na Pariprashne Na Sevaya Upadeksha Yanti Te Gyanam Gyani Na Stattva Darshina Approach the pure devotee. Then inquire from him submissively. Serve him. And then the pure devotee shall reveal the truth to us. So with humility and service. Thus, Lord Chaitanya clearly showed that a sincere student never cares whether his spiritual master is born in a high Brahmana family or Kshatriya family or whether he is a high-grade sannyasi, a brahmachari or whatever. Whoever can teach one about the science of Krishna is to be accepted as a guru. Chapter 31 The Supreme Perfection 
whatever position one may have, if he is fully conversant with the science of Krishna, Krishna consciousness, he can become a bona fide spiritual master, an initiator or a teacher of the science. In other words, one can become a bona fide spiritual master if he has sufficient knowledge of the science of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Becoming such a spiritual master does not depend on a particular position in society or on birth. This is the conclusion of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and it is an in accordance with the Vedic injunctions. On the strength of this conclusion, Lord Chaitanya, previously known as Vishwambara, accepted a spirit, spiritual master, Ishwara Puri, who was a sannyasi. Similarly, Lord Nityanand Prabhu and Sri Advaita Acharya also accepted a sannyasi as, the, as their spiritual master, namely Madhavendra Puri, who was a disciple of Lakshmi Pati Tirtha. Similarly, another great Acharya, Sri Rasikanand, accepted Sri Shamanand as his spiritual master. Although Shamanand was not born in a Brahmana family, so also did Ganga Narayan Chakravarti accepted Narotama Das Thakur as his spiritual master. In ancient days, ancient days, there was even a hunter named Dharma who became a spiritual master for many people. There are clear instructions in the Mahabharata and Srimad Bhagavatam 7.11.32 stating that a person should be accepted as a Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya or Shudra according to his personal qualifications and not his birth. For example, if a man is born in a Brahmana family but his personal quali qualifications are those of a Shudra, he should be accepted as a Shudra. Similarly, if a person is born in a Shudra family but has the qualifications of a Brahmana, he should be accepted as a Brahmana. All Shastric injunct injunctions as well as the version of great sages and authorities establish that a bona fide spiritual master is not necessarily a Brahmana by caste. The only qualification is that he be conversant with the science of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. That alone makes one perfectly eligible to become a spiritual master. This is the conclusion of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his discussions with Raman and Rai. So here what we are understanding that who can become a spiritual master? Anyone can become, right? I mean, if you are qualified. Qualified with? And no uh, whichever, yeah. I mean, whichever what caste. What is the qualification? Uh, that uh, you are conversant with the science of Krishna. Yeah. Like you, One who knows the science knows. of Krishna, he can become a spiritual master. And does it matter which family, which community he is born in? No. 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 It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. And here Prabhupada is also giving so many great personalities who took um, mm. instructions, who accepted their spiritual master who are not necessarily coming from Brahmana families. So being born in a particular family is not a qualification. Qualification is knowing the signs of Krishna. In the Hari Bhakti Vilas, sir, it is stated that if one bona fide spiritual master is born in a Brahmana family and another qualified spiritual master is born in a Shudra family, one should accept 
the one who is born in a Brahmana family. This statement serves as a social compromise, but it has nothing to do with spiritual understanding. This injunction, injunction is applicable only for those who consider social status more important than spiritual status. It is not for people who are spiritually serious. A serious person would accept Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's instruction that anyone conversant with the science of Krishna must be accepted as the spiritual master regardless of his social position. There is an injunction in the Padma Puran which states that though a highly elevated spiritually advanced devotee of the Lord may have been born in a family of dog eaters, he can be a spiritual master. But that a highly elevated person born in a Brahmana family cannot be a spiritual master unless he is a devotee of the Lord. A person born in a Brahmana family may be conversant with all of the rituals of the Vedic scriptures. But if he is not a pure devotee, he cannot be a spiritual master. In all Shastras, the chief qualification of a bona fide spiritual master is that he be conversant with the signs of Krishna. So here Prabhupada is giving more evidence. Evidence. Of course, he said from Sriman Bhagavatam says that no Bhagavatam he read so many times that it doesn't matter which family one is born in. If one is um, the, uh, one who knows Krishna, who is a pure devotee of Krishna, he can be a spiritual master. And here Prabhupada is saying, Padma Puran is saying the same thing. Padma Puran is saying that if one is born in a family of dog eaters, and but he knows the science of Krishna. He can become a spiritual master. And one may be born in a very high family, a Brahmana family, but if he's not a pure devotee of the Lord, he cannot be a spiritual master. So all the scriptures are saying the same thing, that a pure devotee can be a spiritual master. And Prabhupada is stating here, Hari Bhakti Vilas, that because someone may be very much, um, very much caring about the social status, and he may want to choose a spiritual master. So then he can choose one. So there's a available as one who is born in Shudra family, one is born in Brahmana family, and one who is very caring about social position, then he accepts the spiritual master in the Br Brahmana family. Why? Because according to him, that is very important. Oh, they both are devotees. Huh? They both have to be devotees. That is the first thing. But if one is really very concerned, oh, which family this, that, then he should accept one who's born in Brahmana family. But one who's just serious about spirituality does not consider all this, uh, which family one has taken birth and all, all these things, but he's just concerned to make spiritual progress, uh, understand the truth. There is no such application. So this is why Prabhupada is saying that uh, this injunction is applicable for only those who consider social status more important than spiritual status. A person who really gives, he's really serious about being situated in his own spiritual position. He can take instruction from anyone who is who knows the science of Krishna. Lord Chaitanya therefore requested Ramanan Rai to go on teaching him without hesitation, not considering Lord Chaitanya's position as a sannyasi. Thus, Lord Chaitanya urged him to continue speaking on the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. Mm -hmm. 
Let's see. Okay. Yeah. Because you are asking me to speak of the pastimes of Radha and Krishna, Raman and Rai humbly submitted. I will obey your order. I will speak in whatever way you like. Thus, Raman and Rai humbly submitted himself as a puppet before Lord Chaitanya, the puppet master. He only wanted to dance according to the will of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He compared his tongue to a string instrument, stringed instrument, saying, You are the player of that instrument. Thus, as Lord Chaitanya would play, Ramanan Rai would vibrate the sound. Being an instrument in the hands of the Lord. Does anyone remember any other example? Famous example. Of a devotee who is acting as the instrument in the hands of the Lord. Is it Narad Muni? No. Well, Narad Muni, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, Narad Muni is doing the work of reclaiming all conditioned souls. So he's an instrument in the hands of the Lord. But specifically, um, Arjuna. Ma oh, okay. I thought Maharaj Prithu. Okay. Maharaj Prithu. okay. Yeah, Maharaj Prithu also. Yes, Maharaj Prithu. An instrument in the hands of the Lord. Yes. Yes. And specifically, Arjun. Arjun. Krishna oh. tells Arjuna, you become my instrument. And here Ramananda Rai is saying, I'm your instrument. You know, you are telling me to speak. Whatever you are making me speak, I'm speaking. I'm your puppet. You are the puppeteer. I'm speaking whatever you want me to speak. That's the relationship between the Lord and His devotee. So we'll stop here for today. Yes. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ki, Jai Shlapu Bhaj ki, Jai Gaur Bhaktavinda ki, Jai Hare Krishna